Hello everybody, The Lawn Gnome is here. You're nothing but a court jester. So in the late summer, I found out from a couple of my friends that there were two specific movies that were coming out through Netflix and finding out who, in fact, were directing these two films, I got very excited and wanted to make sure that I got the opportunity to see them. One of them has already become one of my favorite films of 2020, and that, of course, is Aaron Sorkin's The Trial of the Chicago 7. But the movie that we're talking about today, the second one that I was recommended, has also become one of my favorite films of 2020, and that, of course, is the new David Fincher film, Mank, starring Gary Oldman, Amanda Seyfried, and Charles Dance. This movie is the story of famed screenwriter Herman Mankiewicz, also the older brother of the other famed man in Hollywood, Joseph Mankiewicz, who directed Cleopatra. And this is the story of Herman Mankiewicz creating for Orson Welles what turned out to be the American Film Institute's greatest film of all time, and that, of course, is Citizen Kane. And we all know about Citizen Kane, and I personally am not a big fan of Citizen Kane, but knowing the history about this movie and knowing the trials and tribulations that it took to make that movie, I was so excited to see a story about the man that wrote the script. And to many, it turned out to be Herman Mankiewicz's greatest achievement of his career, even though people thought at that time he was just washed up. So I am a big David Fincher fan. He happens to be my birthday buddy after all. But also knowing that according to what I had seen in the trailers, that he was really making a nice love letter to Hollywood, a black and white film, an aesthetic that looks like it came from the golden age of Hollywood. But even more importantly, the fact that I found this out when the movie officially hit Netflix, this movie script was written by David Fincher's father, Jack, 1993, who passed away, unfortunately, 10 years later. So the fact that David Fincher finally had the ability to turn this movie written by his father into something that the entire world could see, that does not scream any less than true love and appreciation for your father. And I will say that even though this movie has been getting a really mixed bag, one of the few things that a lot of people are saying, if you are a film appreciator, if you truly appreciate classic filmmaking and the golden age of Hollywood, you will love this movie. And they were not wrong. I really, really enjoyed this movie. Even though it is just very dialogue driven, it's all about movies getting made by people who just love to make movies. This movie is also really done in the tradition of Citizen Kane because it is told through flashbacks. While we actually see Herman Mankiewicz played brilliantly by Gary Oldman while he is officially rehabilitating from a car accident, he also has the company of a young woman named Miss Alexander who is played brilliantly by Lily Collins who definitely should get an Academy Award nomination for her performance because I thought that she was wonderful as Miss Alexander. To see him just putting these words to paper, even, even though he's not technically writing them, while he is uh, rehabilitating from his injury, we then go into the past where he's actually working for Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer, and he is introduced to William Randolph Hearst, thanks to a mutual friend of his, who happens to be Hearst's wife, and that, that of course, is the famed actress Marion Davis, and to see the relationships that Herman Mankiewicz builds and also the relationship that he has with his brother Joe, it was just really, really cool to watch this man just work. And even though Herman Mankiewicz had so many problems, he was a compulsive gambler, he was a raging alcoholic, even though he was not perfect, he still truly respected the art of movie making. He never cheated on his wife. He never did anything to truly drive people away because even though he annoyed so many people, people still appreciated the fact that this man was a creative genius. He also is one of the co-writers of The Wizard of Oz, and they even talked about The Wizard of Oz at the early portion of the story. It was just really interesting to see how this man survived as a screenwriter for these big movie companies 
in the heyday of Hollywood. And it was also just very interesting to see how big name actors and big name movie studio owners really respected the business and loved the business as well. And I also really appreciated how these men and women of Hollywood talked about politics. They talked about World War II. They talked about how Upton Sinclair bashed the rich and how he was actually planning to run for political office in California. And I also find it so interesting how we take a look at how Hollywood lies right now from the political standpoint and how they were in the 1930s and 40s. It's definitely an interesting change of pace, but very cool to watch. But the highlight of this movie outside of everything that I've mentioned has to be the score because Trent Reznor and Atticus Ross teamed up again to give me this amazing score that I never would have ever imagined came from the mind of a man that wrote a song like Closer or Head Like a Hole or Star Fuckers in Court Incorporated. Never in my wildest dreams. And I have loved a lot of Trent Reznor's scores from The Social Network to Gone Girl, but the fact that this didn't even sound like his patented sound with Atticus Ross, we heard the classic sound of the 1930s and 40s, and it is beautiful. I want them to get nominated for another Academy Award, and I'd love for them to win Best Score because they totally deserve it for this. This movie has Oscars written all over it. The screenplay is beautiful. The acting is superb. To get Gary Oldman another Oscar would be fantastic. To see Amanda Seyfried maybe get an Oscar nomination would be wonderful, too. Everyone who took part in this movie did great. If there is anything that I could say that's negative about this film, it's, the, it's just a movie that not many people are going to love. Not that many people like black and white films. Not that many people like movies that are just about Hollywood. So, not everyone is going to see this movie and truly be blown away by it, but people who are just fans of film and appreciate everything that goes into making a movie is just what makes Mank one of the better movies of the year. This is a movie that I definitely want to see again, and I definitely want to own this movie on DVD because everything about this movie is something that I love. This is also a movie that is unlike anything that David Fincher has given me yet, and I'm so glad that he has done so. I am going to be giving Mank four stars out of four. This is definitely one of my favorite movies of 2020. It is in my top five, but will it in fact be the number one? Well, you're going to have to find out in just a couple of weeks. But in the meantime, thank you very much for watching, everybody. Please leave your comments in the box below, and let's discuss Mank, and I will see you in the next one. So he strikes. Black Thunderbolt. Hey, thank you so much for stopping by my channel today. If you're new here and want to see more of what my channel has to offer, please click on the link to my last video or hit that subscribe button to be kept up to date with all of my uploads. Content of all sorts is posted here quite often, so trust me, you do not want to fall behind. I will see you in the comments, and actions speak louder than words.